Our very first stop here in Lincoln City is gonna be dun -da -da -da, Goodwill. <laughs> A lot of the Goodwills on the Oregon coast are a little bit smaller, but this one is a super store just like the ones back home. So let's head inside and see what we can find. This looks like it is a handmade teapot. It is missing the top piece, but it's got really great shape on it. I don't see a price tag, but it does have that little X on the bottom, which at Goodwill means $10. It's a little bit steep, but I think this is a really unique piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. This is why I love checking out all of the end caps. I feel like a lot of the best pieces in the store, some reason, get set on the end caps. This is a great little studio pottery piece and it's only $3.99. I'm pretty sure that this is a butter cover, but it doesn't have the base. I've been finding some really great Raku pottery lately. This one's really unique. I think this top section slides out. Maybe it's a hidden compartment. I'm not gonna force it off though, I don't wanna break it. Looks like I have something in common with the person that donated this. It's a half started project. <laughs> this one over here is a finished piece, but it is $6.99 and with the chip in it, I just can't do it. I've come across another one of these before in avocado green. They're made in Japan and they kind of have the shape of an oil lamp, but I'm pretty sure that they are just a candle holder or a vase because they are made out of plastic. Loving the pattern and color on this handmade bowl. It is only $2.99, but darn it, it has a chip. It's too bad, I think that is a really fun pattern on it. This guy is so fabulous. I have seen these used as ashtrays before. I've never seen this particular one. It is only $6.99 and this Japanese stoneware is pretty collectible. I think I'm gonna grab this guy just because he's so fun. And if you put an incense cone inside there, the smoke's gonna come out of his mouth and his pipe. I'm looking for pieces for my outdoor entertaining area, and I think this is gonna be perfect to put food in. It would work great with chips, it would work great with vegetables and fruit. It is $19.99, which is a little bit steep for Goodwill, but it's a beautiful piece of carved wood, and it's exactly what I've been looking for. The shape and color on this one look a lot like the green Catherine Holm piece that I picked up in Tacoma. It is only $4.99, which is a great deal, but it's missing the lid and it doesn't have the cool design on the front of it like the Catherine Holm has. I have a lot of customers that collect ironwood, so I'm gonna grab this rose. It is only $6.99.
I didn't find a ton of things in that Goodwill, but I really do love this location because I always find really good pottery. When I was here last summer with Michelle, I got several great pieces of pottery and I fell in love with this teapot. It's a little bit rustic and it doesn't have the lid, but it's got great shape to it and I really love the soft color palette. Then this little cutie was only $3.99 and I love the little stripes on here. This one's gonna be so cute to mix and match with different patterns. I try really hard to only pick up pieces that fit my aesthetic and I don't know if this guy necessarily does but I really liked him. It is a vintage Japanese piece and these are really rare and I've never actually even seen one in person. They are not incredibly valuable but whenever there's something that's very rare and it's collected I like to pick it up because I know that I can put it out there on the internet and the right person who's looking for this exact incense burner is gonna find it. So if that is you out there, I picked this up just for you. This is the first time I've come across an ironwood rose and I'm wondering if those two little holes there are to put incense sticks in or do you think maybe there was something else in there? I've seen some that have holes down here for the leaves to come out of, but I'm not sure what might've gone in there. So if you know what might've gone in there, comment below and let me know. And then my favorite piece that I picked up is this one right here. Now this might look a little bit more rustic than the pieces I typically pick up for myself, but we are gonna be doing an outdoor living space that is gonna be for our outdoor barbecues. And I wanna go a little bit more Tuscan and rustic out there. And I think that this will be perfect on the big table with lots of fresh fruits and vegetables for my garden. I'll pop in a picture of my inspiration so you guys can kind of get an idea of the look that I'm gonna go for. But I really think this is gonna be great. And I can't wait to get my garden growing and get lots of veggies and put them in this beautiful bowl. Now we are gonna to head to my very favorite antique store in all of Lincoln City. I just passed up some beautiful fabric in Astoria and I'm so glad that I did because this is the perfect size that I was looking for. It says blue and white homespun and it is $48. What's nice about this one here is it's a nice and thick fabric so I feel like it's gonna hold up really well. Perfectly tattered, it's that old world look I was wanting. I used to love making things out of popsicle sticks when I was young. This is like next level popsicle stick art right here. This is one of my favorite spaces in the antique mall because this dealer has pieces from all over the world and everything is so colorful. And their pricing is really affordable. This Molotex style right here is only $18. And these are something I typically see selling on Etsy and eBay for around 60 to 75. All of this work here is hand stitched. I have such an obsession for anything that is hand stitched and colorful these days. This is a pair of antique silk Chinese slippers and they are only $15. I'm not sure if they're gonna fit me or not and if they don't, they're gonna be coming to the store, but I'm not leaving these beauties behind. They are in really wonderful condition for their age. This is one of the largest hand-painted Mexican pots I've come across. These are so great because they have drainage holes and this one is only $30.
This is a fun mix of bohemian and modern. If only I needed more lighting. Something I am highly considering collecting right now are these beautiful solid white porcelain mid-century vases. I love that they are all so simple and neutral, but they have very earthy elements and designs on them. There is a seller on Etsy that has a huge inventory of these vases. They are not cheap, but they are so beautiful when you put them together in a large set. I know so many of you guys are getting really into the 80s designs and patterns and this very geometric abstract look. This bowl is only $12.50. And there's also another one that looks like it was made by the same artist up here. And I like the colors even better on this one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab both of these because I think that they're very fun. It's a very reasonable price and I'm just happy to be out here supporting these other local businesses and being able to bring these fun things to my online shop for you guys. I found an Afghan hound, but it is not my Lisa Larson that I'm on the hunt for. These little spaghetti ones are kind of fun though. I know a lot of people do collect these. These remind me of the bowl that I got at Goodwill for my cats to drink their water out of. I got it a couple years ago and I still use it every day. Well, I don't use it, they do. <laughs> This is an interesting combination having the floral design mixed with the southwestern prints. This one says that it was a camel saddle bag. It's 135 and it has two sides to it. Obviously that'd be awesome on a camel, but it would also be amazing if you repurposed it. It's just too beautiful to be sitting here and not be used and loved and enjoyed. Every time I've been coming across a Raku piece of pottery, I've been trying to look at the signature on the bottom so I can start to learn the different artists and see whose pieces are very collectible and valuable. Some of you guys were super bummed that you missed out on the last tooled leather wallet. These are hard to find in good condition where they are held together well because they get used so frequently. This one here is only $8. I'm grabbing this one and it'll be coming to my August shop sale. I am all for statement pieces of pottery right now, and this one is really large. It has great colors on it. It's only $15. Let's pull this down and take a look. Look at how big this beast is. It's only $15, and the best part, it's got a drainage hole. The cart's filling up. I remember seeing these lamps here when I came last summer and they are so fun. They're $2.25 for the pair. And even though I do not need any more lamps, I really want to get them just so I can save them and give them new lampshades. They need new lampshades. 
these vases are so stunning. This is the exact color palette that I'm gonna be doing in our new house. If I could only find something with this design and color, but in a little bit more of a modern shape. I always get super excited when I spot these in a vintage store or an antique store. It looks like they do know the value of these. They've got $139 on that one and $139 on the huge elephant. That's actually not a bad deal for how large these are. All of the stitching and beadwork is hand done in India. They were really special pieces. I still remember after I found my very first one at a thrift store. And then a few weeks later, I saw one in one of Justina Blakeney's Jungalow posts. I was so excited that I had something that was the same as something she had. Look at that bright turquoise chunker. It's so big, it's almost as big as my thumb. I love these Swedish candle holders. They actually look really beautiful if you were to put a little test tube down the center and you can actually use them as a propagation station, not just candle holders. They are so beautiful either way. I even like them with nothing in them. In all my years of picking, I have never found this Japanese ram vase before. I'm really excited about it. I had a similar donkey once, but this is the first time finding the ram. It looks like it's in perfect condition, and I think he is so cute. We've got a lot of empty walls in the new house, and I was really hoping that I was gonna find some great artwork on this trip. This piece here is only $65. The gentleman at the antique store recommended the 60s cafe. He said it's got really good food and it's got really cute decor inside. And you know I'm all about the 60s, so let's go see what they've got for lunch. Lunch was delicious. I highly recommend that place. And I want to give a special shout out to my sweet friends that I just met in there. You know who you are. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your trip. It was lovely meeting your whole family. So take care. Now let's get junkin'. I know you might not think I need any more hats, but I actually only have a couple summer hats and I've been wearing this same hat in every video lately. So I'm looking for another fun summer hat. I don't see any here, but I'm gonna keep looking. This pottery reminds me of my click tap pottery. It's a little bit different color palette, but very similar design. I remember this amazing buffet from last summer too. I cannot believe it's still here. It's got beautiful shape and detailing on it, and I love how it bumps out. Let's see how much they have on it. They've got 425. You guys, someone come get this. This piece is stunning.
I found this exact same pair of bookends and they had the same kind of chipping along all of the edges. I'm pretty sure they're made out of some kind of plaster and they don't hold up well, but darn, they're still cute. This shop has an incredible jewelry display when you first walk in. I'm obsessed with this Zuni piece right here. They have all kinds of turquoise, but if you are not into turquoise, they've got a lot of other things here for you. This shop has probably one of the largest collections of glassware I have ever seen. I like to head to the upstairs area. It's an entire second level. They've got lots of really great collectibles and pottery. And don't forget to look behind things because you never know what you're gonna find tucked away. I think woodblock prints are really great, not only because you can actually still use them to create a piece of art, you can use them to stamp a pattern on fabric, you can use it to make DIY wallpaper. But another thing that I think they're really great for is just to have them as display pieces. You could even throw a couple command strips on the backside and add this to a gallery wall. Gallery walls are always more fun when you put something a little bit unexpected on them. And thank you to everyone who told me what these were. They are Chinese silk irons and you put the coal in there and it heats up the bottom and you use that to carefully iron your silk. I'm gonna have to be so picky on this trip because I can only fit so much in my car and I'm hoping I can still make it to the California border before it fills up. Just as you begin to get to the outskirts of Lincoln City, there is another huge antique mall. And I'm really excited to go check this one out because I've never been here before. I didn't even know it existed. I just saw it on the side of the road. So it looks really big. I'm looking through the windows right now and it looks like there's some real potential. So let's get inside and see what we find. <laughs> This has got to be one of the coolest benches I've ever seen. Check out these lions that are the armrests. So fabulous.
It's funny how you notice different things when you're thrifting in different kinds of areas. I have noticed a very large quantity of carved wood pieces here on the Oregon coast. And I'm wondering if that's because I've seen a lot of carved wood stands when I'm driving by on Highway 101. And check out this painting. Doesn't that kind of look like Van Gogh? I have a feeling that one thing I'm gonna end up with a lot of by the end of this trip are brass things. The nice thing about brass things is I can kind of put them all in one box and I don't have to worry about them breaking. It is so off season right now, it's the middle of summer, but you always gotta plan ahead. This pair is gonna be perfect for my holiday sale in December. This is an interesting folk art piece. All of this is hand carved and it's only $25. That's coming home with me. I knew there was a reason that I had been looking forward to this trip for years, literally. This is so much fun hitting all of the shops down the entire Oregon coast. I hope you guys are having fun with me and seeing all of the beautiful treasures that I find. Some of these I am keeping for myself, but most of them are gonna be coming to my next shop sale. And I'm saving all of my Oregon coast tour finds for my August shop sale, which will be the first Friday of August. And at this exact moment, I don't know what that is because I haven't looked at a calendar, but I will pop it in right here for you guys. My sales launch the first Friday of every month at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And I just am so thrilled with today's finds. I met some wonderful people. I made new friends at lunch. I made new friends at an antique store. And this is just an absolute blast. I was just getting ready to film this clip with this haul for Lincoln City. And look at what is on our side yard in our rental home. That is an actual weed. Lorenzo, come say hi over here. That's an actual weed. What's funny is that the fence to get to that little side yard doesn't open. It's short. So I'm going to go climb over that and cut down that weed because that's a little bit embarrassing. It's weird that this gate doesn't open. I think that's kind of bizarre. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I need to go and weed that. Now for the record, most of that was already there when we moved in. But I think I'm going to take a little filming break and go take care of some of that business. It's literally taller than me. It's like two feet taller than me. Let's get this thing chopped down. It's like a tree. Oh my gosh. I need to have like a tension rope to make sure it falls the right direction. A few moments later. So much better. All right. Here's my haul from Lincoln City. This piece right here I chatted with the store owner about and sadly a school teacher had just recently passed away and this came from her estate and from what he said it was made for her by one of her students and her name was Leanna so I thought that was really special it's a really neat piece it's so fun to know that some of these pieces I found on my trip are going to be in my home forever. And a couple of the pieces that I plan on keeping for the rest of my life would be these beautiful fabric pieces that will make wonderful table runners. This incredible piece of art from 1955. You guys already know that I love lions and this has a very Egyptian feel to it. I think it is such a wonderful piece. And I'm very excited to have that in our new home. And then of course, this beautiful bowl right here. It is the exact kind of rustic vibe that I was hoping to add to our outdoor space. So that's gonna be great. And you can see it fits a lot of food in it. And when I entertain for my big family, I'm gonna need a lot of food. 
I ended up getting this $30 grab bag. So it's got some little sterling silver single earrings and some pieces that need a little bit of work and repurposing. But let me show you the two pieces that I'm the most excited about out of the bag. And it is this beautiful bear claw piece right here. So this is a signed sterling piece with a turquoise stone in it and it's ready to go. It just needs to get added to a chain. And that's a decent sized little pendant necklace. And then there's another beautiful Zuni inlaid piece in here. Let's find it, there it is. And this is another artist signed piece. It says R and G T. So I'm gonna Google that, I haven't done that yet and find out who the artist is on this piece. This is a really beautiful one because you can see it's got the black onyx turquoise mother of pearl and coral all inlaid together and it's a beautiful teardrop shape so those will make wonderful necklaces and the whole bag was only thirty dollars i was able to find out a little bit more about this piece so it is a husband and wife duo it is richard and geneva and richard is a mexican silversmith and geneva is a zuni silversmith and this was probably done in the 1980s from what I was able to find out. And it looks like once I put that on a beautiful chain, it should be worth around 100 to $150. Our next stop tomorrow is going to be in Newport, Oregon. So I will see you guys there. Mm -hmm.